This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. St. Mary woman charged for stabbing child's father. A 35-year-old St. Mary woman has been charged for the stabbing of her child's father. Ramona Johnson, otherwise called Mona, of Oxford District in Freehill, was arrested and charged with wounding with intent on Sunday. Her court date is yet to be settled. She has been on the run since the Wednesday, June 1 incident in Fortabella District in the parish. The police report that about 7.20 p.m., Johnson went to her child's father residence in Fortabella District to pick up the infant. She reportedly attacked him with a pair of scissors, took the child and left. Moments after, the man realized that he was stabbed in the back. He was taken to a hospital where he was admitted and treated for a punctured lung. Labor are charged after gun seized in Trelawney stop and a search. A Trelawney laborer was on Sunday charged after being held with a gun during a police stop and a search. He is 26-year-old Victor Allen, otherwise called the journal of Falmouth, who is charged with illegal possession of firearm. The police report that a team was conducting a patrol along Market Street when around 6.40 a.m., Allen was seen acting in a suspicious manner. He stopped, searched, and the SCCY CPX-2 9mm pistol and a magazine containing 17 9mm rounds was found in a bag he was carrying, the police report. He was subsequently arrested and charged. Tracker leads a cops to a gang of thieves. Three men were held and the two others are being sought after more than $2 million worth of gadgets stolen from party goers in Negril on the weekend were recovered when a smartphone tracking feature led police to the gang of suspected thieves. Among the electronic devices recovered were 16 iPhones, two Samsung Galaxy devices, two laptops, as well as USB chargers and adapters. Some 36 are SIMs which are used for unlocking an iPhone which has been locked to one network or carrier, were also seized along with a cash amounting to Jamaican $200,000 and £30. The gang is believed to have targeted patrons at the Dream Weekend party series. One of the victims told the news that she was able to track her stolen iPhone to the home of the thieves and pass on the information to the police. The woman said that she had locked the iPhone 13 Pro Max as soon as she discovered that the instrument had been stolen at the Daydream's White Sands last Saturday. Once the phone is locked down, the thieves cannot use it, so I don't understand why they bother to steal them, she lamented, bemoaning the inconvenience the thieves had put her through. This was supposed to be a great weekend, but it will be my last time attending the event, added the distraught patron, who was reduced to tears after the device went missing. Andrew Coombs, whose iPhone was also stolen, described the situation as nightmarish. These men left their homes to rob people of having a good time. It is sad because people spent their money to enjoy themselves, especially after the pandemic, he said. Sergeant Gladstone Seeley, the tourism liaison officer who was in charge of the operation, said more recovered items are to be processed. This is the first time I have seen such a large haul for a couple of days at the events. In previous years, you would have one or two phones, and maybe breaking of cars would take place. I must commend the officers for doing such a remarkable job, Seely said. The men held will go before the court on Wednesday to answer to charges laid against them, Seely disclosed, adding that the hunt for the other two men continues. Three slain in bloody start to August in Hanover. A mother of five and her common-law husband were among three persons shot dead by gunmen in Hanover on Emancipation Day. The victims have been identified as a 35-year-old shopkeeper, Venetia Lisa Oregio, and her partner Miguel Elder Wilmot, a 30-year-old construction worker, both of Pumpkin Bottom District in Sandy Bay, Hanover. The third victim, 29-year-old laborer, Omar MacDonald of Barbican District, Sandy Bay, was killed in a separate incident. Police reports are that about 3 a.m. on Monday, Oregio and Wilmot were awoken by knocking on their two apartment boardhouses, with the men outside identifying themselves as police officers. The couple was ordered to open the door, following which the police impersonators shot them both in the head 
killing them on the spot. The assailants then ransacked the house and reportedly made off with a sum of cash which Oregio had been keeping as a banker in a partner scheme. Oregio's father, Lloyd Oregio, said that he and his infant grandson, who were asleep in an adjacent room, were also awakened by the banging and the shouts of, Police! My daughter say, Who is that? And them say, Police! The grieving father recalled. So she say, Push the door, and then a pure shot me here. So me in a son a ball out say, Officer, I'm me and my four-year-old grandson in a so, and they shot them stop. The senior Oregio said his daughter was a genuine person who did not keep a lot of friends. People forget them partner draw right and now, he added, telling the news that he believes robbery was the motive of the deadly attack. The senior Oregio revealed that his daughter had previously lost two fathers to her children, the first in a stabbing incident in Haddington, Hopewell, a few years ago, and the second was killed with his brother, also in Pumpkin Bottom. Now she come meet her date with this mania. He said, cursing her luck with men. While investigators were on their way to process the scene of the double murder yesterday, gunshots rang out in another section of the area known as Barbican. It is reported that MacDonald was also asleep at his home when gunmen rode into the community on motorcycles and forced their way inside the dwelling. The attackers shot him multiple times before searching the house, then making their escape. The police say Wilmot and MacDonald were known violence producers in the area and have been picked up, interviewed, and released on several occasions but never charged. In the case of MacDonald, he was convicted for illegal possession of a firearm several years ago. The police have not disclosed a motive for the killings as they continued their investigations. 25 people have been killed in Hanover since the start of the year. Police 119 Emergency Number Back in Service The Police 119 Emergency Number is working again, the Jamaica Constabulary Force says. Service was restored Monday afternoon. The JCF advised earlier that a technical team from its telecoms provider flow was working on the issue. The problem was not disclosed. Man who won case against the Trinidad and Tobago bail ban shot dead a Trinidadian man who won his case against the Twin Island Republic's law blocking bail for persons accused of murder has been shot dead. The Privy Council ruled last week that the provision was unconstitutional in an appeal brought by the government. Akili Charles, 42, was near his home in Trinidad on Saturday when several gunshots were heard, local media reports say. He was found bleeding on the roadside. He was in custody from 2010 to 2019 on a murder charge. After he was freed, Charles brought a suit against the government over the provisions of the Bail Act. He lost in the High Court. But Charles was successful in his challenge when the Court of Appeal ruled that persons accused of murder could apply for bail. The government appealed and last week, Thursday, the Privy Council upheld the decision. A blanket prohibition of bail infringes a number of the rights and the freedoms the judges wrote. The UK-based Privy Council is a final appellate court for Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago. Based on the ruling, the Jamaican government could face a challenge to any amendments to prohibit bail for accused persons. But Justice Minister Delroy Chuck has dismissed those concerns. Even though the government is looking at the Bail Act, the idea is to strengthen it to ensure that for those who could create public disorder or abscond or may commit crimes when they are out on bail, we do an appropriate assessment to make sure that those persons are not granted bail, Chuck said Sunday after a service at St. Peter and Paul Catholic Church commemorating the 60th anniversary of Jamaica's Court of Appeal. Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs Marlene Malahu Ford sparked a fierce public discussion after she hinted during her contribution to the sectorial debate that persons who are charged with certain crimes may not be granted bail. Firearm seized in St. James, a man charged. A man was arrested and charged following the seizure of an illegal gun in West Village, Montego Bay, St. James. Charged is 32-year-old Kino Gale of West Village. His court date has not been finalized. The police report that about 5.20 a.m. on Saturday, cops were in the area when a house that was occupied by Gale was searched. 
During the search, a Taurus 9mm pistol was found in the bottom drawer of a dresser in a room. Following an interview in the presence of his attorney, Gail was charged. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.